You're listening to Side Hustle Pro, the podcast that teaches you to build and grow your side hustle from passion project to profitable business. And I'm your host, Nikayla Matthews Okome. So let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. It's Nikayla here with another episode of Side Hustle Pro, specifically a solo episode. Today, I'm going to do my first ever Entrepreneur Diaries check-in where I just share candidly what's been going on with me, how my first month of entrepreneurship has gone so far, and um, yeah, just let you guys know what I've been up to. So let's get into it. So there are a couple of things that I'm going to touch on. Number one is my first premium launch, which I've been working on. Also, some of the anxiety episodes that I've experienced. And also having to truly be an adult and make the right choices, specifically when it comes to money. Finally, I'll talk about some small pivots that I've made even just in the few short months since I've left my job. And then finally, I'll just get into, you know, what's on tap for the rest of Q2. So here we go. Where do I start? You know what? I think I'll start where I left off. I'll start with the whole anxiety episodes thing. So... I'm really, I don't even know if I can call it anxiety because it's not like I'm, I'm crippled. I don't really know what, if if it's medical anxiety, but I have been experiencing some episodes where I just feel a little bit like I'm so scared of what I have to do. And it it will be so small. It's like, oh, like I'm hyperventilating because I have to send an email and it kind of scares me because I know once I send the email, you know, and that person is on board, that sponsor, whatever, what have you, then like I have like 10 times more work to do and I really have to prove myself. And it's one of those things where you know you have it inside of you, you know you can do it, but at the same time, it's it's new territory and it's intimidating and it's the, you know, quintessential entrepreneur dilemma that we face, but um, it's real, it's real. So it's something that Nicole Walters mentioned in her episode as well as like, you know, And even Tanya Rapley in the most recent episode where you are so high for the first couple of days after you quit and, you know, you're so ready and I'm still so ready for everything, all my plans, like I cannot wait. But at the same time, like you think you're going to be popping champagne and celebrating, but you're actually like slowly experiencing panic. Like it just starts to creep up on you out of nowhere. That's like, oh, like I I really have to do this. I said, I'm going to do this. Oh my gosh, like this is I this is it. Like <laughs> I am responsible for me bringing in money every month. Like there is no, you know, auto direct deposit coming and you knew this going in, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't hit you in waves of panic. Particularly when, you know, you have to depend on other people for money, right? So, and I say depend on other people meaning like Now I'm in the business of providing services and for that I get paid, but I'm depending on whoever is doing the pain to deliver that on time. So, you know, things like late checks, they do happen. So how can I put myself in a position where I depend less on less on other people's payments and I just have such a good savings as well as cash flow going like that, that does not keep me in a state of panic. So those are the type of things that I think about and work through as I begin this entrepreneur journey. How I'm dealing with it as well is I realized that although I wasn't a hugely chatty person at my job, you know, there's something about seeing people, having to speak to them, to say hello, what have you in the hallway, in the elevator, that does keep your spirit just, you know, I can't even explain it, but but what I'm trying to say is I realize that I, I need to talk to people more. You know, that's one way I deal with anxiety. So, you know, calling up my best friend, leaning on fellow entrepreneurs, talking to Moyo. You know, it's really nice to have someone in the same house with a similar mindset who is trying to do similar things. And we could talk through that together. But it's also really become apparent to me that I need to get out of my house. And, and that's what I do as much as possible, because that cabin fever is real. I go stir crazy. I need to interact with humans. So I find that that reduces any anxiety I feel also exercising. So I joke with Moyo that, you know, I'm going to be a gym bunny. Like, that's what I say. I just like 
I am the gym bunny because like just getting that 30 minutes to 60 minutes in, you know, gets the endorphins moving in a positive way and also eases some of the anxiety. Um, There was a week, I think, I forget which week it was, maybe the second week or so where I really wasn't sleeping that well. It was just because I was thinking so much. I was thinking about what I had to do. I was I was getting nervous before uh, calls. I was, you know, uh, fretting over proposals that I wanted to submit, but yet not actually doing the proposal because I was kind of paralyzed with, with, again, this irrational fear of what I don't know, (laughs) because, you know, not only can I do it, but I know that the other person believes I can do it and is actually excited to see what I produce because that's how much they believe in and respect my work. Yet the mind is a funny thing and it will play tricks on you. It will cause you to doubt yourself, especially when you are now responsible for bringing in the income on your own. So all of that is something I knew was going to happen. And I talked about how I was planning to read books to help me through some of these fear moments. And um, transparency moment, I haven't completed those books yet. But like I said, I am um, cognizant of this challenge. And it's something that, you know, I'm going to continue to be candid about because that's the only way to get through it. Um, I have lived uh, most of my life as a person that worries. And that's my default emotion, just worrying. And I I don't think I have to stay that way. Like, I do not believe that I'm some fixed person who cannot grow out of this tendency and this habit. So it's something I'm facing head on in 2018. and, And, you know, ready to push through. But again, I started making um, dates outside of the house to meet up with my fellow entrepreneurs, especially my Black women entrepreneurs in the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area. I can't wait to start, you know, interacting more. So I am getting through it that way. All right. Second thing I want to talk about is... Adulting. We've all, I've been in the working world for a while now. I've had to be an adult, make the right decisions. Otherwise, I wouldn't have a roof over my head and all that stuff, right? However, going out on my own has taken this to a new level, you guys. For example, and this started last year because as I shared in my I Quit episode, I had been plotting this move for a whole year. And so throughout the year, whenever I wanted something, you know, like the fact that I was going to make this move, and needed to have more cash on hand in case of an emergency would always be in the back of my head. Um, Case in point, there was a conference, scratch that, a retreat that I really wanted to go on. And if you guys know me and you know some of my favorite Black women entrepreneurs, you know which retreat I'm talking about. So I really wanted to go on this retreat. And at the time it came out, like everyone else, I was on that website. I was like first person there. Like as soon as, you know, I saw the announcements go out, I would be signing up. As soon as the application opened, I was doing the application. I believe I was like on my way to the train. Like I I had to stop. I think I was like, I cannot. I got to finish this before I even leave for work. Did that, applied, got in, had the opportunity to go. And then I got sticker shock. I saw the price of this retreat, which was going to feature awesome Black girl magic, entrepreneurs who've been on this show, entrepreneurs who I, you know, I admire and respect and haven't yet met in real life and couldn't wait to go out and meet them. But then that price just stuck with me. And, you know, but I had FOMO, fear of missing out. I was like, I have to go. Like, not everyone got in. I have to, like, this is going to be amazing. I can't miss this. But then... That adulting set in. And I was just like, girl, girl, (laughs) you could, you could technically make this work. However, should you, should you at this particular moment in time spend a few to several thousand on a trip, a business trip, when you have other things to cement in your business? And the answer to that was no. A part of being an adult is recognizing when it's your time. It's not always your time. Just because you want to do something doesn't mean that it's the right time to do it. So a part of this journey is recognizing 
that there are a lot of things that I'm eager to do and I'm excited to do, but it's all about timing. And for me, this next few months will be all about proving and and replicating my systems and replicating income. And once I know that I can continue to do that and I see that happening beyond six months, then I will say to myself, okay, maybe I can do some of these things that are ideals for me but are not critical to my business growth. So things that are critical to my lifestyle and business growth include health insurance. I knew that I wanted to have health insurance. Anything could happen. So the thousands that I could have spent on this retreat actually end up, ended up going to my set-aside health insurance funds for the year. And, you know, for anyone who is on their own or has seen the healthcare marketplace, you know that um, health insurance is a pretty penny. So... There's no reason that I need to be spending any money that could have gone to something like that. And so that's that's what I did. I put it towards the practical, the responsible things. And I but I feel so much better because of that. Like, yes, I just saw the retreat pictures on Instagram and I'm like, that looks beautiful. That looks gorgeous. And hey, I, you know, I might apply to go next year. Like maybe, you know, the timing will be better in my business and I'll feel better about cash flow and be willing to part with a lump sum. But for now, I wasn't willing to part with that. And knowing that that's in my bank account gives me so much peace at night, I I can't even um, tell you. But yeah, it's tough being an adult. Being an adult means that you have to let go of FOMO, let it all the way go, and remind yourself what your goals are, what you're trying to get to, and that Nothing that is meant for you will miss you. When it's your time, you will have it. So knowing that, make the best decisions for you. And being an entrepreneur is no joke. As the guests on this show have said, um, cash is king. Cash is king. So I prioritize having more in the bank, even if I can technically afford other things because you never know what's going to happen. Like I talked about with the you know anxiety, checks do come late. People who owe you money, do go MIA. (laughs) So I always have to make sure I can cover in case, you know, something goes awry. So learning that, living that, and I'm proud of myself because the old Nikayla might have made different decisions, but I am sticking to my guns. Also, shout out to Moyo because I did have a couple moments where I was about to dip into FOMO and he, you know, quickly was like, girl. (laughs) Well, he didn't say girl, but he helped me to come back to, to center and remember why we do what we do and what's most important for us right now. So I continue to work on being more responsible, being tighter with my funds. Um, I'm not perfect. And when I start feeling those moments of anxiety, I actually, one of the ways that I cope, one of the negative ways that I cope, well, I won't say negative, but um, something I can reduce is I actually order on Amazon a lot. And it will be little things. It'll be like, oh, you know, I need some more of this uh, toiletry. But it, it's it's really like, you know, um, what's it called? Therapy, shopping therapy, you know, retail therapy. And we don't need to do that when we should be living below our means and saving. So I'm not perfect. I work on my Amazon habit, but I do um, hold on to the lump sums for now. So cool beans. Hey guys, it's Nikayla with a quick word from our sponsor. As side hustlers, we're in the business of turning our ideas into value. The thing is, we need time to cultivate fresh ideas, which is exactly where our sponsor FreshBooks can help. FreshBooks makes cloud accounting software for creative professionals that's so straightforward to use. You'll save hours every week and have more time to let your creativity flourish. If that's not enough incentive, the FreshBooks platform has been rebuilt from the ground up. They've taken simplicity and speed to an entirely new level and added powerful new features. I can't cover them all, but sending a branded invoice in under 30 seconds and enabling online payments in two clicks is a good place to start. There's also a new projects feature where you can invite employees or contractors to collaborate and easily share information, files, and updates. If you're listening to this and not using FreshBooks yet, now would be the time to try it. 
FreshBooks is offering an unrestricted 30-day free trial for all my listeners. No credit card required. All you have to do is go to freshbooks.com slash side hustle pro and enter side hustle pro in the how did you hear about us section. Another thing that I've done in this past month of entrepreneurship is I've gained more clarity into what I want to do as far as consulting versus coaching. So when I first set out on this path, I thought I would do more consulting. I know how to do it. It's certainly something I've done working internally as a digital marketer. You know, you are an internal internal consultant for many different clients and you are working on projects for them. So that was my natural inclination. And, you know, it's a lot of people who leave corporate like, oh, I'll just consult. But as I started learning more about consulting versus coaching, I realized that I actually prefer coaching. And shout out to my friend Alexis Lior, who's actually a life coach, who, um, you know, she reached out to me because she saw me kind of like using the two interchangeably. And, you know, she really wanted me to hone in on the fact that there's a huge difference between coaching and consulting. In her words, if you're coaching, a client is doing the majority of the work while you pull out the best aspects of them through your expertise and experience. But if you're consulting, you're doing the majority of the work while they pay for the results. And so what I realize is I do best as a coach. Like I am great at helping people to think and to extract learnings and then to start to implement it themselves. I want to be able to work with multiple people. Like I'm ready for us to start growing as entrepreneurs. And so I can't just do, um, you know, one-on-one consulting, like, you know, I initially envisioned, like I want to be a coach. And so that's why I put up my business coaching hours and, and the work with me opportunities on my website, because it allows me to work with multiple people and to be able to do what I do best, which is through my expertise and experience, help them to pull out the best aspects of themselves. So that was great clarity for me. And as a result, it made me pivot my thinking from doing some brand work to actually building out my podcast coaching arm. And that's what I'm going to get into next. So this is the launch portion of what I've been up to in January. So in January, I knew I wanted to work on my first premium product. What do I mean by product? When you package your services and put a fee on teaching other people how to replicate your success, that's what I mean by product. And in this case, it's a digital product. I had been thinking for some time how, of how to help other podcasters. I, you know, when I went to the podcast movement conference, I saw a lot of other podcasters and it just made me realize like, man, there's just so many indie podcasts out here and not all of us are rising to the top. And it's, you know, it's charts. It should fluctuate. But instead, you kind of see the charts stay pretty much the same. And, you know, I had a different experience when I launched. I came out the gate like hitting, you know, within the top 20, top 30. And I realized that, hey, I know some things about marketing. <laughs> I know so I know why, you know, people are not rising to the top. And I want to share that. I want to amplify our voices particularly because we have a lot of good content out there. So as I thought more about this towards the end of November, I actually purchased a course from the queen of courses, Danielle Leslie, who will be in the guest chair in a few weeks. And I wanted to learn from Danielle because I've been studying her for a while. Absolutely, you know, have looked into her programs and knew I wanted to eventually actually go through the program, but only wanted to purchase it when the time was right. And I knew I was going to invest the time. So that's what I did in November. And through Danielle, I've been learning how to create and launch my first premium product. And through that, I've developed a podcast accelerator, which for now is invite only as I work to scale it. And that's because it's very high touch. Like I truly am giving my all to the 10 people in this cohort so that they too can position themselves and get on the pathway to be, 
you know, getting the downloads, getting the monetization that they deserve. And I can only do that. I only have bandwidth to do so much. Um, in the future, I do hope to open up the program larger over time and do different cohorts. But for now, the first cohort has closed and I'm really excited to work with these students and get them these results, deliver value. It's exciting and it's scary all at the same time. Good scary though, not anxiety scary, good scary. But what I learned from this launch is the importance of sales. Sales is something we're not really taught. At least I wasn't taught in school, you know. You, you learn about negotiation a bit. You learn about marketing. And sales is something that's kind of just like thought of as like something people do, salesmen, you know, for like, I don't know what. But it's even something that sometimes has a sleazy connotation. But what I'm realizing more and more is you have to be able to summarize for people what value you have to deliver and how you can solve their problem. Like that's all it is. Sales is you explaining to someone else how your value, your knowledge helps to solve their problem and their challenge. And as soon as I was able to recognize that, I realized how much I want to know more and more about sales and I want to understand how to communicate to people that I know how to get them where they want to go. And so that's what January has been about for me. And so that's why I haven't finished reading my anxiety books, because I have been engrossed in this course with Danielle and learning how to launch a premium product from scratch, launch my first, you know, full-fledged accelerator, as I said, for emerging podcasters. This is not something I took lightly. So I knew I wanted to come out the gate with, you know, something that was beyond the level that I've come out with before. And that's why it has been a more targeted and strategic launch. And it's not something that's just like blasted everywhere, like come one, come all. No, it is for people who are actually serious about this. Um, that's something that I'm encountering, too, is a lot of people are just like, they want to start a podcast, but they don't, they're not really sure why. And they, I don't think they realize the amount of time that it will take. So it's not something to just start on a whim. Like if you don't have a plan for it, then, you know, what's the end goal? You have to have an end goal. And you'll, you'll hear some of the guests on the show talk about that, especially in upcoming episodes too. Like you really have to have an end goal with any business, but especially with podcasting, it's, it's no different. So that's why right now I'm focusing on the targeted cohort who they, many of them have already started. And now it's just about getting the ROI on the amount of time that they invest in this show and see and increasing the week over week downloads and positioning them to start getting uh, paid to create this content that's so good and well loved. It's just the brand awareness isn't quite there yet. So that it honestly sets me alive. Um, I've had a few moments where I almost felt like crying? I don't know. I felt like, you know how I always say that God shows us signs, but only in glimpses? Like, here I am, you know, someone who was working at NPR, started my own podcast, and then am now able to pair my love of diverse, multicultural voices with my love for this medium. And I'm able to give back and, and, and work with people who, you know, have something to say, but don't necessarily have the platform or the brand awareness and help them to get there. Like, how lucky am I? How, how awesome is this? And like this whole time I was being prepared for that. Like, I didn't even see that. But you, as Steve Jobs says, like, you could only connect the dots looking backwards. So all this time, all of this was coming in handy and... I didn't even know it. I didn't even know it. And um, that's my end of January kind of marvel, just like, wow, like all of this will make sense. So even though there are moments where I have anxiety and fear and I'm scared, like knowing how every single time I look backwards, it all makes sense. That's what comforts me because I know it's going to make sense at some point. Um, and the most exciting thing about January, y'all, is I made my revenue target, like straight out the gate, hit the ground running. 
And I was not playing games and I made it. That said, that said, that said, that said before, before y'all think I'm out here thinking this is easy and like, oh, I got this. Boom. I'm no, 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 no. <laughs> That's something it is it, like I hit my revenue target. But then I actually got scared because I was like, I I'm not going to launch every single month, you know, so I have to make sure that one, I'm saving enough to cover months that are lower and two, that I'm thinking through, you know, what will supplement this when it's a non-launch month and it's a non-month when I'm pulling in a cohort. Um, so these are the things that I'm grappling with. If I had everything all ironed out, you would know it, but I don't. And I'm OK with that. I am reminding myself of what I said, you know, in my episode about just the new year that worry is presumptuous and I'm not going to sit here and worry about a future that I don't know is going to happen. That's not promised. And that's not to be negative or, you know, um, depressing or anything like that. It's just to say that I'm living in the moment. I'm seizing the day. My bills are paid. (laughs) Um, And I am um, pushing through anxiety, pushing through fear, enjoying this ride with my husband and, you know, really excited for what is to come. So. Talk to you guys in February. Thanks for listening. This episode was brought to you by FreshBooks. For your free, unrestricted 30-day trial of FreshBooks, visit freshbooks.com slash side hustle pro and enter side hustle pro in the how did you hear about us section. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Side Hustle Pro. If you want to hear more from me, head on over to sidehustlepro.co forward slash side hustle corner to get my weekly side hustle diaries chronicles about my own journey from passion project to profitable business. And if you want to find me online, I'm at side hustle pro on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Don't forget to join the side hustle pro Facebook community. Go to sidehustlepro.co forward slash mastermind. And as always, if you love the show, do me a favor and subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. Thanks, guys. Talk to you next week.